Welcome back to the channel folks, Zach Barnes here, and today I want to talk about the Nord Grand 2. So with all the hype around NAM, Nord released the Nord Grand 2, and in today's video, I want to talk about is it worth it or not. So we're going to touch on a few key subjects, that's going to be the features of the Nord Grand 2, how it compares to its predecessor, we're going to talk about the sound of the board, and also its use case, like in which scenarios is this board best utilized, and also some competitor comparisons. So let's get right into it. I'm just going to walk you guys through my process, it's kind of like how I look at the board, Board. and you know when I'm making a decision whether I want to buy a board or not this is kind of the mindset that I have when approaching it so I'm just here on the website so everyone you, you all can see with me um, Nord Grand 2 and here are just some of the main features right it's got the new uh, Kawhi hammer action going on uh, advanced layering so two pianos and two sample synths so that's pretty cool uh, let's see your support for Nord piano monitor triple pedal so um, I mean it's got plenty of features we know that uh, the, the Nord Grand 1 was great, so this is going to be even better. Uh, the most important thing, though, that I like to check out is how does it compare to its predecessor? So right here we have this comparison chart. So off the bat, I don't know how different these key beds are. There might be a little bit of a marketing ploy there, uh, or maybe there's some small minor improvements. So, I mean, I don't know if it's a major improvement or not. I haven't played it, so I, I couldn't tell you. But I don't think the key bed is massively different than the original one. Um, but so far, same hammer sensors, ivory touch, both have double headband outputs, blah, blah, blah. This is all the same. Um, you get one more location for live programs, okay? Uh, the splits are the same. So here's our first major difference. It's the piano layers and sample synth layers. So we have two for the new, right? Now, depending on who you are, this is a big deal or it's not a big deal. For a guy like me who loves synthesizers, like I got a North Stage 3, I love that because it gives me more flexibility. But we got to keep in mind that this is a digital stage piano. So it's meant to be piano player focused. And the reality is that's not the biggest or most important factor for a piano player because they're really just trying to hone in on the piano sound. So it's like if you wanted to get into having synth layers, just go get a North Stage. So although I love this, I wouldn't necessarily say this is like a great uh, upgrade because uh, now having the extra piano layer is nice. But like I said, if you're a, uh, a strict piano player, and maybe you're a concert pianist or just that's all you play, having two layers isn't really that big of a deal. Um, everything else is the same. It looks like they don't have panel lock anymore. That doesn't bother me. I know some people swear by that, but I never really cared. I mean, none of my keyboards have panel lock now, so uh, for synthesizers, they're nice, but other than that, um, let's see. Here. I mean, things are pretty much the same. I mean, we got the same string resonance, piano filters, same sample library, memory size. Uh, the sample synth is bigger, okay, so you get one gig instead of 512. Um, once again, I love that, but the Nord Piano 4 or 5, I, can't, I think Nord Piano 5 is the number on. Nord Piano 5, like if, if you want that, go get a Nord Piano 5. I think the Nord Grand 2, really the, the bread and butter of that instrument is, you know, piano focused. Um, let's see here, it looks like they have a couple more effects here. and a little more reverb settings. Okay, yeah, so, I mean, looking at the comparison, it's not a massive difference. I mean, if you have the Nord Grand 1, I can tell you right now, I wouldn't upgrade to the 2 because you're getting, you know, you're getting more layers, that's cool. Um, you get 512 megabytes more sample memory, that's cool. You get a few more effects, that's cool. Nothing wrong with that, but just strictly comparing it to its predecessor, um, I don't see a need to upgrade, especially considering the fact that this is really targeting stage piano. Um, so let's move on. So we talked about the features and how it compares to its predecessor. Let's talk about the sound. Now, it's no secret, Nord sounds great, and that's just that's just that, right? I've, I've owned and had Yamaha, Korg, Roland, Kurzweil, Nord. I mean, I've played and owned all of them. And Nord, to me, definitely earns the title of being one of the best sounding keyboards. Whether it's the best or not really depends on, is that subjective? But it is definitely at the top, right? It's definitely in the top one, two, three, like for sure. If anyone says Nord is one of the best sounding keyboards, it's like, okay, even if it's not your favorite brand, you, you'd have to respect to say, okay, you know, you're not crazy for saying that. So, I mean, there's not too much to say about the sound. Nords sound great. And if they didn't, 
they just wouldn't sell. So, you know, I have one for a reason. I love the sound and the usability. So the sound there to me, is, um, that's a no brainer. Let's talk about the, the, the use case and usability, right? Cause those two kind of go hand in hand. So like I was saying before, this is a stage piano. Okay. So when we talk about stage piano, we got to think about the player. A player like me loves synthesizers, so I'm always going to be a Nord stage, like for first and foremost, because that incorporates that incorporates, you know, synthesizer organ, and the piano engine. This right here is really for the dedicated piano player, right? So we have to think about that in context. And the other thing too, it's 47 pounds. And when you look at just let's look at some of these photos. When I'm looking at these photos and I see the layout of it and just the overall design of this of this uh, keyboard. It's not screaming portable, and nor do I think it's supposed to be portable. Um, the Nord Piano would be the portable solution. This one's more, to me, of a permanent setup. I even think they have some accessories, and I could be wrong, but I think you can have the accessories where you have it on the wood, uh, the wood bench and whatnot, and, and the wood stand. So um, this really, to me, is like a permanent install. So whether it's in your house, or whether it's in a church or whether it's at a dedicated concert hall, this to me is like, hey, you know, rather than having an upright piano, you can just install this into your house and you got headphones, it's digital, so you have the convenience factor and it sounds great. You can install it into a studio. So this to me is more of like replacing an acoustic upright. That's how I look at this. So if you're looking for something highly portable that you can take for you from gig to gig, this is not it. You want to go for the Nord Piano 5, right? Because that one's got the chassis of the Nord Stage, and it's got all you know. It's, but it's piano focused, right? No synth engine, no none of the extra stuff. So again, use case. This is think permanent installation. Of course, can you transport it? Yes. Is 47 pounds the end of the world? No, it's not. You get two people, you're good to go. I mean, I could carry it on my own by myself, but it's like why? So get two people. You can move wherever you want to, but it's not something you want to move all the time. So I would definitely, if you're considering this board, definitely have the mindset of like just leaving it in one place. I really think this is great. For, like I said, if you're if you're just simply replacing or considering an alternative to like an acoustic um, upright piano, this is a good option. Permanent install, sounds great, great feel, great key bed, because Kawhi makes real pianos, and the Kawhi key beds are really nice. They really are nice. And then, of course, you got the headphone output. You can hook up studio speakers to these, so great board, but use case-wise, permanent installation. Moving on, let's talk about uh, pricing. So here, we have it at $44.99, okay? And then we have the previous version at $34.99. So that's $1,000 difference. Um, like I said off the bat, if you're looking for this, I think the first one is a great way to go uh, because you save $1,000. But if you just like to have the latest and greatest and you want dual engines, then go for the new one because it has that. So, you know, that does give you some feature proofing. Um, it does give you some flexibility. And I think that comes down to if you're going to use this as a permanent install in a studio, I think the Nord Grand 2 would be worth it because then you have some flexibility with your sound set, right? Because in the studio environment, it's not, it's, you know, um, anything goes, right? So in the studio environment, you want that creativity and flexibility, but if you're just looking to install this and replace of a acoustic or a, an acoustic upright or something like that, get the first one because you're really just gonna be playing one piano sound at a time. That's its forte, that's its bread and butter. But price is $44.99, $34.99. Now, I told you I wanna talk about some competitor, competitor comparisons, so let's get into that. Um, Yamaha YC88. Right, that's one of the newer ones, and it's got the uh, organ and the piano and some sample synth as well. Um, let's go down here to some specs. This one is 41 pounds, so it's six pounds lighter, but this one also has uh, wood keys. And of course, Yamaha makes key uh, pianos, and their key beds are always been amazing, or have always been amazing. So definitely can always recommend a Yamaha keyboard as far as the key bed goes. And if we look at the price, it's 31.49. So it's competitive with last year's Nord model, but of course with the Nord Grand 2, I mean, you're, it's 13, 1400 bucks more. So there you have that. Um, and let's check out the CP88. This is more of like, this is more of a comparison for the Nord Piano 5, but just so you kind of just know what's out there. Um, this one's $25.99. It still has a really nice uh, graded hammer key bed. And graded just means the weight changes across the key bed like a real uh, piano would. Um, this one is 41 pounds as well. Um, so, I mean, they don't have as many piano sounds as Nord does. 
as far as different types of sounds, but they still sound great. And again, this one's $25.99. So we got $25.99 and the top is $31.49, whereas the Nord is um, $44.99 for the top and $34.99, right? Let's take a look at the Roland RD2000. This one's been out for quite a while. They've been updating it. They've got new piano sounds and things of that nature on there, but this one's probably the weakest of the bunch just because I think this piano's like six years old. It's been out since like 2017, 2018. Um, but anyways, this one's $24.99. So again, this is, this is in line with like the Nord Piano 5 and the Yamaha uh, uh, CP88, but this one is bigger in size. Um, and so I wouldn't want to look, this one's 47 pounds too. So in terms of use case, I wouldn't want to lug this around if I didn't have to. This is big and heavy. I think this would be a better permanent install in my opinion. Or if you're going like on tour and you have a, um, if you go on tour and you got like back line or if you got some uh, stage hands to help you out or uh, your own um, roadies. But, and then we got the Core Grand Stage X, which just came out as well. And as you can see here, that's a whopping 3K. Um, once again, the body on this one looks to be big like the, um, like the Nord. It's 55 pounds. So again, I'm thinking permanent install. So um, this is just to kind of give you a quick overview of what the competitors are doing. Um, 3K. Now I will say this, I had a Core Kronos and I love the sound of the board. The pianos are great. The roads in my opinion, actually I think were the best roads ever. I think Korg probably makes the best roads period. Uh, even over Nord. And some people might disagree, but I don't know, I've owned both. I love the Nords, but I mean, I think Korg edges them. I don't know. But um, the Grand Stage, 3K, seven sound engines it's got the rh3 weighted hammer action onboard effects i'd love to get my hands on this and try it i'm gonna go down to guitar center and mess with it um, but we're right there it's still cheaper than the nord so you still save 500 bucks and you get their latest one and that's saving 500 from their previous model and of course you save 1500 from the newest model so that's some competitor comparisons whether it's worth it or not let's go ahead and talk about it um so with Nord being 4,500 and 3,500, and then the rest of them being, I think the most expensive competitor was 3,100. So Nor, uh, Yamaha and Korg coming at 3,000 at the very, very top end. We're rolling at 2,500. And I think Kurzweil has, uh, I know they've got some options here as well. Let's see if they, okay, well the Forte, that's their flagship. That's got, that's not a stage piano. So that's not a good comparison. Um, this would probably be the closest one. That's 2K. So as you can see, Nord is the most expensive. Now this isn't surprising. Nord has always been the most expensive. And I'm gonna address that in another video, but some of that has to actually do with manufacturer size. You know, Yamaha, Korg, uh, Roland, these are heavy hitters. I mean, Yamaha makes so many different instruments and they make like electric audible, they make like, um, you know, mountain bikes, dirt bikes, and uh, ATV, like they make a lot of stuff. So that's a huge, massive corporation. So it's, it's actually unfair to compare prices in the sense of not every manufacturer can charge uh, the same price because you have your economies of scale. So I'm gonna actually address the, the cost of Nord boards in another video, but I just wanna throw it out there that part of the price and the reason why Nord is so expensive because they're a smaller company. And so when you're a smaller company, you don't have as many resources and things are more expensive. That just is what that is. Um, so, and then, um, so w with that being out the way, let's just talk about who should get the Nord, who should not get the Nord. So the first two factors that I look at when buying a board, first is budget and second is sound requirements. And so budget obviously is first, uh, sound requirements is second. Now for me, that actually flips around on a personal level. Sound quality is important first. And then I, I set my budget around that. So what I do is, um, we well, you know what, let's, I'll walk you through how I select the keyboard. So first thing first is sound. Like I don't care about budget. I need to first figure out like what is going to help me get what's in here, out here, right? What's going to help me get from here, out here. So first things first is what has the sound or the capability to produce the sounds that I want to create. That is the single most important thing for me at this stage of my career is, okay, you know, I'm trying to create what I hear in my head and what's going to allow me to do that 
the, the easiest and fastest and smoothest way possible. Um, so for me, I don't care if it's cheap or expensive. I just want the tool that's going to connect with me the best. Now, like I said, I, I owned a Korg, um, a Korg Kronos. I've owned uh, Motifs, Moex 8s. I've owned Nord Stages, Nord Pianos. And I spent a lot of time just trying different manufacturers, different boards, Rollins, and seeing what I like and what I don't like. I settled on Nord back in 2017. I had a Nord Stage 3. I settled on that just because I love the combination of sound quality and use case, the usability with the fact that the, all the buttons were on there. And the other manufacturers weren't doing that yet. Uh, Yamaha, or Korg had the touchscreen. Yamaha had the regular you know, dial wheel. And so it wasn't until the CP88 and the YC series that they started moving toward that Nord-like button per button, uh, not per function interface. But with that being said, I like Nord's piano sounds the best. Uh, something about what they do with their sampling, I don't know what it is they do, but every piano sounds different. And every piano has a distinct characteristic to it. And it really, it's the only board that truly curves the desire of like, or scratches the itch of wanting to play an acoustic piano, right? So when I go play an upright piano, I'm in heaven, I love it. But when I sit down and play a Nord, it's like, okay, I can, it, I can bypass and get through it. So I think for me, Nord always has the best sound quality in terms of raw pianos and raw roads. Uh, we'll chord with the roads, but with raw pianos. But again, it comes at a cost. And so the question now becomes, after I figure out what I want is, okay, is there any other competitor that's similar and what's the cost? So for me, I actually would be looking at the Korg Grand Stage. I love Yamaha as a company, but something about their piano sounds and their stage pianos, it just doesn't do it for me. Now, I also come from the world of a lot of gospel and R&B musicians where the Yamaha motif is on every single record known to mankind since 2001. So there's, a, there's a, quite a bit of fatigue that I had that I was just tired of hearing the Yamaha sound. <laughs> so take that for what you will. Um, but for me, the Grand Stage X would be the closest competitor. So it's like, okay, I love Nord, but for $4,500, that's a lot of cash. Uh, it's a lot of cash. And so I'm like, well, my question would be is how does this sound? And then, you know, is that piano sound $1,500 worth it to me? And there's two schools of thoughts, you know, on one end, it's like, no, it's not. You know, uh, the Korg makes really good piano sounds and I think I'd be happy with that. But on the other side, when you look at it from a lifetime purchase, it's like, well, you know, you get what you want, you buy it once and you're done versus you compromise and maybe you're not satisfied all the way. So you have to think about that. And this is something where, you know, I would buy one of these Nord Grands to be like a permanent in-house uh, in piece. You know, um, I wouldn't have it in my studio. I'd have it somewhere in my house because I still like to just sit down and play and just connect with the instrument. And so for me, you know, I'd really have to sit down and say, okay, which one makes me feel the best? Cause I'm gonna keep this for a long time. You know, we're talking 10 years. So when you look at 1500 bucks over 10 years, then all of a sudden it's not that big of a deal. But if you're upgrading keyboards every couple of years, that's a massive deal. <laughs> so um, for me, with this Nord Grand 2, I'm looking at more like furniture, you know, and as much as I love this Nord Grand 2, I think the first one is probably what I would, is probably what I would go with because I have a stage three. So if I want to have a bunch of options, then I'll just use my stage three. But for something like this, I really just want to focus in on just playing the piano, loving that. And so I would wind up doing a comparison for myself between the core grand stage X and the grand one, the previous model. Um, Yamaha, I love the feel of their key beds, but for some reason their pianos, like I said, have just gotten a little bit sterile for me. Uh, Kurzweil, the great board, but I feel like um, I still think Korg does a better job in terms of the overall piano sound. Not in the Forte, that's a whole different conversation, but you can see the price is 4K. But um, I, I think for me, I have to go between the Korg and the Nord Grand too. So, but anyways, I hope this kind of gave you a little bit of help and insight into what's going on with this Grand Stage 2 and just kind of how I looked at it and you know what's important, what I think is important, how you can kind of help yourself navigate this digital keybed world. I mean, at the end of the day, we're starting to split hairs. I mean, everything sounds good. Once you get into this realm, it's really about preference. All right, and I can't stress that enough. Everyone has their own sound, so it really comes down to preference. Like, it's not that Nord is better than Korg, or Korg is better than Nord. It's just, I prefer the sound of Nord pianos, right? Um, but again, it's all context, and some of these come to factor. But 
if you're looking for a permanent install solution where it's like, hey, I, I just want a dedicated piano to sit down and have fun and enjoy, uh, and have some headphones so I can play any time of the night, I think the Nord Grand 1 is a great value now that the Nord 2 Grand 2 is out because again, it's 3,500 bucks. At that price, you're in line with the competitors. Yamaha's flagship is 31, the, Craig, the Grand Stage is, is uh, three grand. So you're within 500 bucks. Completely reasonable, completely acceptable. I would swing for the Nord. I'm already in the wheelhouse. I love the piano sounds. I know I'm gonna be happy. I love the functionality, but the, I respect Korg enough to try the Grand Stage X before I make my final decision. So I hope that's helpful for you guys. Um, let me know in the comments below what other pianos you wanna get my thoughts on. Um, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.